Ghana has received 100 armored vehicles from the European Union as part of increased aid for border security to coastal West African nations facing spillover from the Sahel region's terrorism. A statement by the European Union has said that Ghana's aid was also part of a broader 616 million euro package to strengthen defense and security in the Gulf of Guinea. After meeting with President Nana Kufuado in Accra, the EU foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, says the aid, which will later include aerial surveillance equipment and electronic warfare systems, will target job creation and services, following concerns that jihadists may exploit ethnic tensions and economic dissatisfaction to recruit Ghanaian youth. Well, uh, joining us to discuss this, we have uh, an international relations and political analyst, Michael Kwajunkitia. Uh, Michael Kwajunkitia, thank you very much for your time. Michael, are you there? If you can hear me, please unmute your Zoom so we can hear you clearly. Uh, good evening for having me on your show. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Nketiah, what or how does uh, increased EU aid for border security in Ghana, which has a border with countries like Burkina Faso, uh, Togo, and La Côte d'Ivoire, how does this aid affect the broader efforts to counter a terrorist conflicts in the Sahel region, the broader efforts, and what is the EU's strategic interest in supporting Ghana in this particular context? Well, in the last two or three years, we have we've had increased insecurity in our neighboring countries. With regards to specifics, I would definitely go to Burkina Faso. There's been a lot of Islamist insurgent attacks in Burkina Faso. And as I'm speaking today, about 60% of Burkina Bay territory are occupied by Islamic militants, armed groups, and other terrorist organizations. Unknown to many, many civilians displaced in Burkina Faso have made their way to some border towns in Ghana. There are more than 2,000, 3,000 Burkina Bay nationals who are seeking refuge in Ghana uh, because of the issue, because of issues of insecurity in their countries, and to be able to properly screen these individuals, making sure that terrorists and other jihadists do not mingle with them and penetrate Ghanaian borders. We need huge security presence in our border communities and border routes along the Ghana, Burkina, uh, Ghana, Burkina, Ghana, Togo, Ghana, Ivory Coast border, and these resources, materials being provided by the European Union are really, really going to be of much benefit to Ghana's efforts of, of preventing the influx of these dangerous jihadists and other armed groups into Ghanaian territory. We also have to put into fact that if, if you look at recent happenings on the, on the sub-region, especially in the Sahel, countries which previously had some form of military alliance or agreements or treaties with countries like France, with the European Union, they've severed these agreements and have now partnered strategically the private military firm Wagner, which is linked to the Russian government. And it is obvious that Russia has become a major geopolitical rival and threat to the European Union. And the European Union would not love to lose a major ally like Ghana to Wagner or Russia in the fight against jihadist insurgency in the sub-region. So if you look at the influence of Russia on the African continent, and more particularly in the West African sub-region and in the Sahel, they are making strategic gains. All right. Previous okay. currently countries that were previously occupied by France and yeah. other European nations. Uh, uh, Quattro, think... uh, Quattro, uh, sorry, please, Let, let's quickly, a very interesting point you've made, but uh, let's quickly listen to President Nana Kofado. He had something to say about this, and we'll come back to you. Climate change and terrorism are the greatest threats to the peace and stability of the world. I think that we are all aware that the spillover of insecurity from the Sahel to the Gulf of Guinea is not a risk, it's a reality. 
It's like climate change. It's not something that may happen in 20 years from now. It's happening now. It is imperative to understand that no single country can confront the terrorist threat on its own. Collaborative efforts amongst nations facing this challenge and critical support from partners such as the European Union who share our security concerns remain crucial in mitigating the terrorist threat in the West African region. Today, we come together to officially unveil a generous donation of 105 militarized vehicles provided by the European Union to support the counterterrorism efforts of the Ghana Armed Forces. If you're, you're there, you can still hear me. Uh, what specific border security measures, you know, and initiatives is Ghana planning to implement with this additional EU aid? We heard about the vehicles and all that. Uh, how will this aid address, or the measures address, rather, uh, the security challenges in the Sahel region? Well, if, if you, we heard President Akufuado right, he talked about collaborative efforts. As we've known since 2001, the, the threat of terrorism or insecurity in any part of the world is a, is, it becomes a global threat. It's a threat to any other country on earth. First, Ghana, Ghana has made so much progress with regards to its border security. For the past three years, it introduced what they the National Security Ministry termed as Operation Kwandago, and it partnered several the military wings of uh, the military of other West African countries to, to share intelligence. So it borders on intelligence sharing, collaborative efforts, simulation exercises to prepare their various and respective militaries for any forms of armed attacks and jihadist insurgency, and to be able to effectively a guarantee proper border security, you are going to need vehicles, you are going to need troops on the ground, and all these requires enormous resources. And I believe that this generous donation by the European Union is going to really, really improve on Ghana's border security, especially when we are having so much threat in the Sahel region. All right. Uh, we do hope that these efforts yield uh, the desired results. Uh, political analysts uh, uh, international relations and political analyst uh, Michael Payon Kitia. Uh, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. <laughs>